So let's talk about milling, or I guess metalwork in general. As I'm sure most of you know, pretty much any process used to turn or shape metal generates a lot of heat. Best example would be on a lathe, you can usually see the heat that builds up in the chips that are usually thrown right at you, or your hand on the hand wheel. If you go by the oxide colours of those chips, the chips are briefly in the high 200 degrees Celsius, and that's pretty hot. This video however is more focused on the mill. Not only do we have hot chips being thrown right at us, the cutters are also a lot harder to resharpen, and a tool that's cooler tends to last a lot longer. It's for that reason why I try my best to keep the cut as cool as I possibly can. Since I bought the mill, my go-to method of keeping the cut cool is to try and flood the cut with kerosene or a mineral cutting oil, using either a spray bottle or using a brush. This works fine, but I want to try and upgrade it to a more hands-off system. A really popular approach is a fog buster or a similar type of mist coolant. It works very similar to an airbrush. It just uses compressed air to create a mist which cools the part down, clears chips and it uses a very small amount of coolant. I've used this type of system before in a CNC mill and whilst they work fine, it's not going to suit me here. For one, my air compressor is just too small for the job and I don't want it running every 5 minutes considering it's housed right under the lathe. I also don't have an enclosure so I'd probably have chips blown in every direction. The biggest issue for me though will be the atomized coolant that will be in the air. I don't exactly want that in my small workshop and I don't really want to breathe it in for extended periods of time. Even with an extraction fan, you'll probably breathe it in a little bit, so I don't want to go down that route. That's why I'll be using a flood coolant system, and I know I'm going to be doing this against all better judgments. You really want to have an enclosure, and preferably a CNC mill to have a flood coolant system, but I think I can make it work. Now they do sell proper coolant tanks with pumps, but those are expensive, and this is all about DIY on a budget. I've bought a coolant hose kit with a shut off valve. This one can be bent and adjusted using these ball socket connectors and they are pretty good. This one here is good quality, it's from Hafco and it was about $30. I've bought a 25 litre tub to use as the coolant tank and for a mill this size 25 litres should be enough. I bought a funnel with a filter and that should help me strain out some of the larger chips and stop them from going into the tank. I bought some 8mm vinyl tubing and this stuff should work. For a pump, I've bought a pond pump and I think this thing was about 40 or 50 bucks. I've also bought some coolant and I'll explain that later on. To set it all up, there will be a few things that I need to do first. Thankfully on this model of mill, the table already has a threaded hole that is used to drain coolant. I previously made up an insert that screws in, so I'll just modify it rather than making a new one. The threads on this one are M16 by 1.5 and I really didn't feel like recutting it. To modify it, I'll take out the old soldered in insert that I used to connect the 5mm tubing. I made up a new insert from brass so I can make up the new tubing. I'll drill out the old hole so I can accept the new larger piece and I'll solder it in using some lead solder. I'll also drill a hole through the top to help vent it. And that's the part done. Hopefully it should be able to drain the extra volume of coolant. The next thing I need to do is make up a magnetic base and adapter so I can hook up the tubing and stick it to the side of the mill. They do sell these in store, but they weren't in stock when I needed them, so I'll make it myself. 
I'll make the part from some stainless steel. I'll cut off a piece and that will become the base. I first took it to the lathe to clean up the faces. I then tried to drill some holes on the lathe, but I was getting nowhere. Stainless steel is really difficult to drill on this lathe, so I'll use the mill. The mill is just a lot more powerful and it's really suited to drilling, so it's a lot easier to do it here. Because I'm using the mill, I opted to use four magnets instead of one, so I'm drilling four holes. I'll flip the part on its side and I'll drill a hole through to accept coolant. The final thing I'll do will be to flip the part and drill another hole through to accept the coolant. And it's been a while since I drilled 316 stainless steel and I really forgot how difficult it was to drill, at least compared to the other steels that I've been machining. With all the holes drilled, I'll tap the two holes for M12. I'll then use some glue to hold in the four magnets. and the part sticks to the mill with a lot of force, so I'm pretty happy with that. With the part done, I now need to find a way to connect the tubing and coolant pipe to the base. To make the adapters, I'm going to use some acetyl stock which I have laying around. As far as engineering plastics go, I'm a huge fan of it. It wears nicely, it's high strength and it's really nice to machine. The first adapter I'll make will be to connect the vinyl tubing to the base. I'll machine it using a piece of high speed steel, the carbide that I have just isn't sharp enough. I'll take the end down and I'll use the die holder to cut an M12 thread. I'll flip it and drill a 7mm hole to let the coolant run through. And finally, I'll take it down to the correct size so I can push the tubing onto it. And that's the part done for the moment. I'll make the next one and I'll start off making it in a very similar fashion. I'll turn down the end and I'll cut the M12 threads in it. This time however, I need to cut some quarter inch BSP threads. Now when I bought this, I assumed I had a quarter inch BSP tap, but it turns out the one I have is 1 8 of an inch BSP. Now a tap is not expensive, but since I have a lathe and I only need to cut one thread, I think I'll just use the change gears that will allow me to cut imperial threads on my metric lead screw. Thankfully I did a video about that, so it should be pretty straightforward. According to the handbook, quarter inch BSP is 19 TPI, so I need a 55, 57, 60 and 65 tooth gear. And I finally get to use my 57 tooth gear that I made using the CNC dividing head. Now I didn't have a small enough internal threading tool, so I had to make one using an old twist drill. It's only cutting plastic, so this should be fine. I know the tool looks a bit questionable, but hopefully it should work. And it's a bit of a tight fit, but I'm very happy with it. The two inserts are screwed into the stainless steel base, and that's followed by the hoses. Now I didn't show it on camera, but I used some silicon grease on the threads to stop any leaks. I've used it before and it works really well. And that's most of the piping done. Next, let's set up the coolant tank. I'll first use a hole saw to cut a hole for the funnel to screw in. Now the funnel is threaded and by sheer coincidence it's the perfect size to allow it to screw in to the hole that I've just cut. 
I didn't plan any of this, it's just a perfect fit. Next I'll drill a hole next to it to allow the tubing to thread through and I'll later add another hole to allow the power cord for the pump through. Before I hook it all up, I quickly rigged a small test to see if the pump would actually work. The pump needs to be able to pump the coolant about a meter up and thankfully this pump can. Initially I bought a smaller 12 volt pond pump and it just wasn't powerful enough to pump all the coolant up. These pond pumps use impellers to push the water up so it has to push against all the water that's already in the tube and there's no backflow valve so you really do need a moderately powerful pond pump if you go down that direction. On the plus side though, because it's just an impeller and a motor, it makes these pumps really simple, so hopefully that means it's going to last a long time. Next I'll fill up the tank with about 18 litres of water. As I understand it with coolant, you can do the initial fill up with tap water, as long as there aren't too many dissolved solids in the water. It helps the coolant create the emulsion, but after the initial fill, you're supposed to use distilled water. Now speaking of coolant, I'm using this Excision XDP2000 and I'm using it mostly because I could pick it up locally in 1 litre satchels. It's a water soluble semi-synthetic coolant. I know it says synthetic on the packaging, but all the documentation I can find says it's semi-synthetic. Now I've never used this stuff before, so I will be going in a little bit blind and learning as I go, but it should be fine. According to the packaging, this stuff has antibacterial, anti-rust additives, so it should be stable. At least fingers crossed. The last thing I want is to come in and see rust spots on the mill. I also don't want to come in and find that it's growing bacteria. I've smelt coolant go bad with bacteria once, and I'd rather not have it stink up my workshop. Though I believe that was with a purely emulsified oil and not a semi-synthetic. Now for general milling and lathe work, it says anywhere between a 5 and 7% concentration is recommended for this coolant, so I'll add it to about 18 litres of water. And it should go without saying, when you're doing this, you always add the oil to the water to help create the emulsion. And that's the coolant done. Honestly, I thought it would be a little bit milkier than this, but according to all the documentation, this is the right ratio. I'll pop the tub under the mill, and I'll screw in the drainage port. I also added some silicon grease to those threads too. Next, I'll drill a hole into the funnel so I can feed the coolant hose directly in. I'll hook the tube into the pump and I'll drop the pump into the tank. To turn the pump on, I have a switch on the power board. With everything set up, let's finally turn it on. And thankfully, that works. However, there are a few things that I need to fix. The first thing I need to address are those T-slot inserts. They work really well, but they are preventing the coolant from draining into the T-slots, so I'll need to get rid of them. The coolant's also draining out the front of the vise, so I'll remove the vise and the inserts, and I'll use the middle T-slots to hold the vise. Though this will cause other issues. As I first pointed out when I first got the vise, there just isn't enough travel on the bed to clear the back of the vise, so I'll have to find another method of clamping it down or draining the vise at a later date. I'll probably have to hold the vise in place using some toe clamps, though I'm not sure. One problem at a time. I'll close off the valve so only a small amount of coolant comes out, and I'm only aiming for a very small amount of coolant to come out just so it doesn't spray everywhere. I'll do a quick test in some mild steel to see how it works. And drilling it, there was a huge difference. I could feel that the coolant was getting down into the hole and cooling it. The chips that were coming out were a lot cooler and it drilled a lot faster than it did before. 
So for drilling, I'm really happy with the outcome. Milling was a bit of a different story though. Unlike the mineral cutting oils that I was using before, this just doesn't have the same lubricating properties as the mineral oil, so trying to take the same cuts at the same speeds and feeds wasn't working for me. In fact, I was getting a lot more chatter. If anything, the flood coolant was making it worse. I was getting chatter and the parts were just looking worse, and I was really worried if I just bought the wrong cutting fluid or if this whole setup just wasn't going to work. However, I found a new approach which worked, and that was just to crank the RPMs. It used to get pretty toasty when I used to do that without coolant, but now it was really cool and it was cutting really well at really high RPM. Here I'm doing about a 3mm depth of cut with a 12mm end mill at about 15 or 1600 RPM, and it's just powering through the cut. So I'm really happy with how it cuts now. The coolant system is also working really well, it seems to drain correctly, although I would be lying if I said it was mess free. There is a small amount of coolant that gets spilled onto the mill table, but that's something that I'll have to work with, and honestly, I knew that it would be a mess from the get go. However, it is small enough that it is manageable. A bit of spilt coolant is a small price to pay for getting better cuts, cooler cuts, and end mills that last longer. Overall, I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's quiet, it works well, and the total cost for setup was about $120. I will say, don't expect me to use this in every single video. I'll probably stick to using this when I'm doing very heavy cuts in steel. Most likely, I'll also have some in a jar or a spray bottle to use in very light cuts. From here on in, I probably won't be able to use any of the old mineral oil or kerosene because you can't introduce dissimilar oils to the coolant. They don't mix with the coolant and they just form a layer on top of the coolant which can allow bacteria to grow. In the near future, I'll also have to get a refractometer and that will allow me to check the coolant concentration. The concentration will change over time as water evaporates and you lose oil to run off with the chips because oil likes to cling to the chips, so you do need to monitor it. It may seem like a bit of a hassle, but it's just another part of the mill that needs to be checked up every now and then. Overall, I'm really happy with the setup and how it's turned out. The work is cool, the chips that get flung out at me are cool, all is well. And with that, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.